In the previous video, I gave you a brief history as to how GATT or WTO came into existence. And the point at which we had left off last time is we were looking at the principles of GATT. We have already considered or discussed four principles of GATT. Number one being trade without discrimination. Number two, reciprocity. Number three, protection through tariffs. And number four, stable basis for trade, that is through tariff bindings. Now let us look at some other principles of GATT. The fifth principle of GATT is to promote fair competition amongst members. Now, one of the things which is considered to be unfair foreign trade practice is the case of export subsidies because the government intervenes and gives money to exporters so the price of those export products become lower. That is an example of unfair competition. So and since the purpose of GATT or the objective of GATT or WTO is to promote fair competition, what they have done is the following. If an importing nation has evidence in a legal sense that the exporting nation is subsidizing its exports. In such a case, the importing nation can impose a tax equivalent to the subsidy on exports so that the export prices are fair for all importing nations. So to promote fair competition, what the importing nation can do is impose what is called a countervailing duty or CVD in short and the extent of this should be equal to the extent of subsidy that has been given to exports of the exporting nations. Number six, GATT and WTO do recognize that sometimes countries get into economic trouble or have may have economic crisis and it's entirely possible that it needs to restrict foreign trade. So what GATT or WTO have done is they have clearly defined the conditions under which a waiver from the obligations of GATT or WTO is possible and you can undertake emergency action. So there's an article, we do not have to remember the name, it's uh, Article 25, whereby a country, when its economic or trade circumstances so warrant, seek a derogation from a particular GATT obligation. And then we also need what are called safeguards provision, that is occasions when the government feels they have no choice but to offer domestic industry temporary protection from imports and once again the safeguards rule of GATT through articles permits some, such actions in carefully defined circumstances. So you can protect your industry but it has to be done in carefully defined circumstances and it should all be temporary. So, so emergency action is possible and there are safeguard provisions in the GATT or in WTO. Look at the next principle of GATT. This relates to regional trading arrangements and in regional trading arrangements what is happening is the following. You are giving benefits or reduced trade barriers to member nations of a regional trading arrangement like European Union or NAFTA. So the, the trade barriers for trade between members of NAFTA like Mexico, US and Canada are much lower than what they apply to rest of the world. Now this is in conflict with the principle of MFN or most favored nation and the members also realize to have free trade around the world is the ultimate goal. And when we have regional trading arrangements, they, they in a way represent baby steps towards world free trade. So regional, regional trading arrangements 
are permitted by Article 24 as an exception to the MFN rule. Then the last principle of GATT or WTO is, is based on the following. If you look at the world, we have rich countries called developed countries and then we have poor countries or what are called developing countries. So developing countries do not have such mature industries like developed countries have and so we need special conditions for developing countries and against this is in conflict with the principle of most favored nation. So once again GATT or WTO members decided we must have special conditions for developing countries so that they can grow. So in 1965, under the leadership of Raul Prebesh, remember the Prebesh hypothesis, a new chapter was, a was added to GATT and this encouraged OECD countries to grant favorable treatment to exports coming from developing countries. Remember generalized system of preferences or GSP where OECD countries give favorable treatment to exports coming from developing countries. So we have, these are the eight major principles of GATT or WTO. Now as far as developing countries go, they needed a platform where they could present their point of view as a collective group. So United Nations decided to establish what is called UNCTAD and UNCTAD stands for United Nations Conference on Trade and Development and then ITC is International Trade Center. Both these are established in Geneva and they are supposed to represent the interests of developing countries. In a way, WTO has two parts now. One is GATT, which deals with trade in goods, and the other component is called GATS, and GATS is for General Agreement on Trade in Services. Now, <clears throat> particularly starting from 1990s, the Internet phenomena has become very widespread, and it is being used for commercial purposes as well. And what we have seen in the last 20 years or so is a substantial growth in trade in services. And since we are dealing with this new development, we had to first define different types of services. Once you define different types of services, we can start collecting data for these different types of services. And then we can also establish rules that should govern trade in services. So let us look at the def different definitions of different types of services. One is called cross-border or mode one. This is services supplied from one country into another country. For example, you receive a software that is being sold by India and you receive it through email or electronic means. And so this is called mode one. The second mode is called consumption abroad. This is services supplied in the territory of one member to the consumers of the other one. For example, you might have heard of medical tourism. A lot of people from US and Europe have started going for medical treatment to other countries. and. So this again has to be considered like trade in services and we need to have clearly defined rules for this. The same thing applies to education. A lot of people from around the world come to the US or Europe to study. What rules should we have? Consumption abroad mode. Then the third type of trade in service is commercial presence and or mode three. By this we mean services supplied through any type of business or professional establishment of one member into the territory of another one. For example, an insurance or a bank company owned by citizens of one country establishing a branch by means of foreign direct investment in another country. For example, 
Citibank is a US based company and it decides to open up a branch in India or China. This is an example of commercial presence, mode 3. Then we have the last mode which is mode 4, presence of natural persons. Here the services supplied by nationals of one member in the territory of another one. For example, Indian doctors come to the US or Europe on a temporary basis or employees of a foreign bank or foreign employees of a bank. These will be put under presence of natural persons and this is mode 4. Then there are two things, <coughs> two other things you should know. One is TRIMS which stands for Trade Related Investment Measures and this is about how foreign investment should be treated in the recipient country, the country which receives this foreign investment, the rules governing that. And then we have TRIPS which stands for Trade Related Intellectual Property Rights. How should we enforce this and so on. So this is all about WTO that you should know. Thank you for your time.